In this video, we are taking a look at fuel cell energy. Now, of course, this is a stock that we've covered previously here on the channel. However, the stock is currently trending and there is a lot of renewed interest in the stock. So with that said, I really wanted to come back to the financials, have a look at those fundamentals again, and really help you guys decide as to whether or not you should be looking at the stock as a potential investment for your portfolio considering the renewed interest around the stock. So let's jump in and let's take a look at those all important fundamentals. Before we jump into this video, can I please ask you a huge favor? Can you click on the like button below this video? This helps us rank these videos and just by clicking that like button, you help support this channel. So like I said, there is a renewed interest in the stock at the moment and the stock is currently trading. So I really wanted to revisit some of the most recent financial results and I've been really scouring through the most recent quarter's financial results. And the company's actually done a pretty good job in their uh, newsletter that they put out, the investor relations newsletter, and they've pretty much highlighted some of the key elements which I would have spoken about anyway. So I'm just gonna read this directly off the newsletter which they put out. So one of the things they talk about is the fact that revenues of 26.8 million are up at the moment, and this is of course compared to 18.7 million year over year in the same quarter. Now having a look at the gross profit, this is pretty the pretty much the one thing they're talking about a lot at the moment, and that is the fact that gross profit is up to 1.1 million. And of course, this is compared to a gross loss previously of 3.1 million. So they've done a very, very good job in terms of moving their gross profits. Now looking at their loss from operations, that is currently sitting at 10.6 million, which is slightly down compared to 10.8 million year over year. They're also talking about the fact that they've got unrestricted cash or cash equivalents of 468.6 million as of July 31. And then they're also talking about the fact that they have a backlog of 1.3 billion. And this is of course, as of July 31. And this compares with 1.33 billion in the same period year over year in 2020. So now let's come up cross and have a look at the stock sheet and see exactly what's going on. So of course, if you've gone back on our channel and had a look at the history, you'll see we did review the stock. We've spoken about how the stock traded in the ridiculously high range of $7,000 plus, and of course has fallen down to this low of 7.39. Now, of course, the stock is of course shorted as well, and it has a pretty high uh, short ratio, which is one of the reasons why the stock price is moving at the moment because of course, Wall Street bets and you know the likes of the moon boys out there have pretty much climbed into the stock and playing the short play, short squeeze at the moment. Now, if we have a look at the volatility on the stock, it pretty much is evident what is playing out. The 52 week high was sitting at 29.44 with a 52 week low at 198. Currently, as I said, trading at 739. So we can definitely see there's a lot of push and pull between the short sellers as well as the retail investors. Now coming down and having a look at the stock sheet, we can see that they have a market cap of 2.79 billion. The share price, if we go back 10 years to 2011 was 146 currently trading at 739. There is no P ratio on the stock currently, negative profit margin of a whopping negative 131%. And uh, they do have net equity at 194 million, which surprisingly represents an equity, equity to market cap of 7.18%, which is still quite critically below our key indicator of 10% that we normally look for. But uh, like I said, it is quite surprising that they are managing to hold on to about 7.18% of their equity. Now having a look at the dividend, you can see there's no dividend cost to company obviously, and they're left with negative 75 million, 918,000 in free cash flow. So the free cash flow is in the red and uh, that pretty much is not a surprise considering that they are on a huge negative net margin at the moment. Now coming down to the year on years, this is where things start to get pretty interesting. And uh, I think this is where I probably hurt a lot of investors' feelings the last time around when I did my last video. But essentially looking at the number of shares outstanding, there has just been ridiculous levels of shareholder dilution. Three years ago, 7,986,000 shares outstanding. That has moved up to 294 million shares outstanding. So in addition to the stock splits that have happened in the past, 
there has just been such major shareholder dilution, it actually completely defies belief that people even look at investing into the stock in 2021. Now coming down and having a look at assets, we can see assets have increased, but of course that is on the back of shareholders money. And uh, this, if we have a look at equity, we can see 117 million to 194 over a three year period. But the fact of the matter is the company is not producing much money. 89 million, 60 million, 70 million, and 72 million on total revenues. But gross profits are in the red currently, negative 15 million, negative 7 million, and negative 21 million in the last three reporting periods. And of course, this comes directly down to the operating income and net income. Have a, have a look at this, negative 66, negative 39, negative 59 million. And in fact, on the net incomes, it's even worse. The company's moved from negative 77 million to negative 89 million to negative 95 million. That means that the company is losing money hand over fist. And this means that they just don't have operating cash flow, which is in the red, and they certainly don't have free cash flow which is also in the red. And I have to point out that on the operating cash flows and free cash flows, all of these have consistently been moving into the red further and further and further year on year. So if we come down to our all important 12 point checklist, this is where we seek out growth and momentum based on value and based on fundamentals. Now, having a look at the 12 point checklist, the first question we're asking ourselves is a momentum question. That is, has the stock price doubled over the last 10 years or inception? Of course it hasn't. It has lost just ridiculous amounts of value. And so we have to mark them down. Next is we looking to ensure that we don't overpay on the value. And so we're looking for stocks with a P ratio between one and 25. They definitely don't meet the criteria based on no P ratio. So we're marking them down once again. They have negative profit margins. So again, on the profit margins, they're getting marked down. They do over have an a strong equity play for their comparison and in terms of where they're sitting. So right now they're sitting with 7% equity and of course that means that they have more assets and liabilities so they score a check mark there. The fact that they don't currently pay a dividend means that the dividend cost is less than free cash flow so they score another check mark over there. But that's pretty much where the good news ends because number of shares outstanding, well there's been huge dilution so we're marking them down. Revenues have not been growing, so we have to mark them down there again. Same for gross profit, same for operating income, same for net income, operating cash flow and free cash flow. None of these showing consistent year on year growth. So pretty much on all of the key revenue indicators, the company is failing the fundamentals miserably. And so this pretty much brings us to the verdict. Now on the verdict, only 16% of our fundamental criteria is being met. 83% of our criteria is not being met. Now the industry median price target over the next 12 months is seven bucks. All the analysts out there have looked at the stock and they think that this is a fair valuation based on the fundamentals. And if I have a look at the return on equity, which is currently sitting at negative 21%, if I look at the return on asset, which is sitting at negative 5%, and return on invested capital, which is sitting at negative 10%, and take into account that they have a net income to total revenue loss of negative 31.77%, I think $7 is probably a very accurate measure of where the stock is gonna fall back to and where it's gonna remain over the next 12 months. Now, that being said, uh, I of course have a strong sell recommendation on the stock based on the fact that at the current price levels, you're probably gonna lose a little bit of money in the region of about 6% over the next 12 months. That being said, there are no fundamentals to back up whatever movement this stock price has. And so any movement in the stock price is based on sentiment and irrationality. And ultimately the company will have a stock price that represents what the actual company is worth. And so without question, no matter how much the sentiment drives this price at the moment in the short term, no, how, no matter how much there is a push and pull between the short sellers and the retail investors, I am absolutely confident that over time, the stock price will reflect the value of the company. And in this case, the company really isn't worth much. So 
I'm sorry to say, if you are holding the stock, this is probably not a good stock to be holding. And if you are looking at the stock, I can tell you without a shadow of doubt that this is definitely not a stock that you want to invest into. So with that said, if you do have any thoughts or comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, as always, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. I'm always happy to answer those. And if you did find value from this video, hopefully I've saved you a little bit of pain and money. All I ask in return is that you please click the like button below this video. This helps us get these videos out and we really, really do appreciate it. Before you go, I'd just like to let you know that you can get access to all of our courses absolutely free of charge. There's no fees to pay, no Patreons to join, and all you have to do is visit our homepage of our website and click on the sign up button. Link is supplied in the description down below. Now, you'll get access to our stock investing course, our real estate investing course, as well as some really great courses on managing your personal finances. And of course, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe and join our Money Tribe here on YouTube, you'll get access to daily stock analysis videos, crypto analysis videos, as well as some really great personal finance content. And of course, all you have to do to subscribe is click on the subscribe button below this video. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever we add new content here on YouTube.